I, my contract doesn't involve space people. No more contract. There's only room for one celestial being up in this piece, and it's this one right here. I got wings. Got halo. What planet are you from? Claire. I'm most familiar with Claire. It has pink hair. Clearly, I'm not from a planet. I fell straight from the heavens. Well, that's a, that's a costume. Sure. You're doing the Halloween thing. It's festive. Actually, this is what I usually look like. Oh. I like hide it for normal day to day because people get really spooked out. The halo people find a little disconcerting. Indeed. Well, I mean, they like it when I'm able to bring them back from the dead. They think that's awesome. See, I, what is your planet's obsession with, with the whole coming back from the dead thing? We don't like being dead? No, I had a very strict understanding of how this, this worked. It was, you were here, and then you died, and they put you in a box, and it was over. Now I understand there's a whole new cycle where you get back up and start eating people. Well, my kind never die. I wasn't on the film strip. Unless there's a celestial war. But I try not to get involved in that shit. Male ego. Crap. But if I bring you back from the dead, you don't come back as a zombie because you've been healed with the light of creation. Right, or I could bring back Joey that. Ramone. Oh no, you can't. We took him home. He says hi. He's ours now. You don't kick him back. We're keeping him. So, all right. I'm understanding we're doing two things tonight. The first is the normal silliness. And the second is an exploration of... True horror. Costume sexuality. Yes, yes. I, I, I am going to learn a bit about human sexuality, as I understand it. No, no, you're not. No. Oh, God. Well, um, let's see. I have to play the jingle thing, which is somewhere. There are a lot of buttons on this thing. Let's, let's do the first part and then have, have that done. Um, this one. Yes. Let's see. Each week, we go out on the worldwide interwebs and find all sorts of horrible things. Little bit we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you. Didn't you get me training? He put me in the chair and said click things. He's got I have notes. Do you even read Earth speak? It took a while, but I got it. See, we, we don't have to deal with that. We just we have a whole telepathy thing. It's much easier. Yeah, you I used to be able. I used to be able to read the minds of men, but when I fell from the heavens, I gave up that power, and you're about to see why. Well, oh, right. This first one apparently re is in regards to the whole festivities. Although I'm not quite sure how you have a thing on this planet that's driving you all quite mad at the moment. But apparently you have determined, you have decided, some of you have decided to celebrate this. Um, the Mayfair Club hosts Ebola-themed Halloween party. Saturday night, Ebola Fever. A prestigious music group, a music club in London's West End, has been branded reprehensible 
over plans for an Ebola themed Halloween party. A very Mask of the Red Death. I got that one. That was a good one. Well, I'm not on the show because I'm pretty. Organizers say they will be enforcing a strict fancy dress code for the party, ensuring the outfits the attendees are in keeping with the theme. What sort of fancy dress would you have if you're bleeding out of every hole? Well, where is this? In England, fancy dress means wear a costume. So in England, to say you're going to a fancy dress party doesn't mean dress fancy. It means wear a costume. But... So basically, show up like you're... like you have Ebola. Sure. And this is... this is supposed to be a celebration. This is why I stopped being able to read the rhymes of men, because therein madness lies. Because humans do stupid shit. Have you ever heard the expression fiddling while Rome burns? No. I've heard the expression natural selection. This is why I don't work with aliens. So fiddling while Rome burns, it's like... Well, it's all gone to shit. Let's get drunk and fuck. Which is kind of what this is. The four horsemen are riding. Plague is nigh. So let's get drunk and fuck. To be fair, though, that's normally the reaction you people have to just about everything. Pretty much. It's kind of... So it's not exactly a... Kind of what we, kind of what we do... Um, what's a Spencer's? Oh, Spencer's. Spencer's is a place you should really visit if you want to study humanity. It's, it's a place where all of the cheesiest people can buy all of the most horrible things. I was told you worked there. I did once upon a time. You know, oh, you fall from the heavens and it's really hard to get work. You don't have a social security number. You don't have a driver's license. Like, it's really hard to just invent an identity out of thin air, so you take what you can get. I I think you'll you'll, you'll probably be the the go-to on this, then. Um, Teen busted for stealing hard rock erection cream, handcuffs, and deep throat desensitizing spray from Maul. This sounds like about my average Sunday, working that job. This South Carolina teen may have had shades of gray on her mind before she... What shades of gray? It's... It's a human masterpiece. It's a, it's a triumph of literature that you simply must read. Immediately. Oh. All right, then. Get all that. Um, she was busted stealing an assortment of sex toys from a Spencer's in Spartansburg Tuesday. Carla Farmer allegedly pinched hard rock erection cream and deep throat desensitizing spray from Spencer's, quote, love unit department at the Westgate Mall. The 18 year old then returned to the store and reportedly stole some handcuffs. Wait, wait. You know, you were going to get those for free anyway. <laughs> it's a fair point. Hopefully you also have a cop yeah. fetish. It, cops also recall they also found two pairs of Victoria's Secret's underwear stashed in her bag. It's like she lapped them up to the lingerie store, also located inside the mall. That's convenient. You can steal from everywhere at once. Yes, that's how it used to work, because... Spencer Gifts lost prevention policy, at least when I worked there, was basically let them have it. So I would let people steal the vibrators because I didn't get paid enough to deal with it anyway. And then they would go to a different store and steal the batteries to run the vibrators and get caught there. 
So the cobbler's policy was you have to pay for it. Unless you don't want to. Unless you don't want yeah. to. Yeah. This does not sound to me like sound mathematics. No. That, I, I do have to say, uh, this is all sexual paraphernalia, correct? The entire store is not, no. There's also, like, t-shirts for popular this. teen bands and posters. Yes, but all of this, all of what she took. Oh, yeah. She was planning a big weekend. Yeah. Except, here's the thing, none of that stuff works. Really? Why are you so it? Because people are stupid. If you want, uh, if you want, if you want sex products that actually work, you have to go to a reputable smut retailer. Spencer's is not that place. Spencer sells baseball caps with marijuana leaves on them. Like, all right. So you have smut dealers and then reputable smut dealers. Yes. I'm not quite sure of the distinction, given the term, but okay. Well, the reputable smut dealers will sell you smut that does what it's supposed to do. The not reputable ones will sell you stuff that doesn't work and vibrators that other people have returned. You seem to have locked up. I, I, I think you, you, you need a reboot. Oh, dear. Do we, are we moving again? There you are. Have they found me? There it is. All right. Um, something I notice about you all is you're all obsessed with these little screens. They're about this big, and you put them in your pocket, you carry them everywhere. They're your phones. Yes. You and don't have phones? All... We, we don't have, like, little things that, like, suck our souls out. It's, it becomes like I've it's, I've observed this behavior. I'm not in the soul sucking business. That's the other side. Well, this is it becomes the the center of their entire world. This is what is Candy Crush and why is it so important? Well, you see, in the beginning, there was the word, and that was enough for man. But now, man has turned from the word and needs other things to fill the void in his heart. So he needs to play little games and stuff. And that's, and that's why I quit, because people have just gotten too fucking stupid for this business, man. How am I supposed Apparently. to redeem your soul if I can't even keep your attention long enough? Because you're like, oh my god, I met an angel, I have to tweet about it. Well, apparently they have a new product for people who cannot stop using their phone. It's called the no phone. It is the same size, shape, and weight as one of, as an iPhone, but it's just a hunk of plastic. There it is, right there, right, right, right there. It, it doesn't do anything. It's just... So apparently, if people are addicted to their phones, what they do is take this with them for a placebo effect. And it has what they've called the selfie upgrade, in which they stick a mirror to it. Oh. I don't understand the point. Well, apparently it's you're so addicted to the phone that you must have something approximating. Yeah, but people don't I... carry it around because they enjoy the feeling of that little brick in their pocket. They carry it around because it does things. And if you, it you doesn't is... do things then there's no point. You know what, what this is reminding me of? They had those experiments on the racist monkeys where they would take it away from its mother and they would make this little wire cage and cover it with fake fur and it would think the little wire thing was its mother. 
Yes, but the whole point of the phone, that's like that's like trying to teach them to breastfeed off the wire cage. It's not gonna work because it doesn't serve the function it's supposed to. Oh, you get a mirror? It's, People are not super excited to carry a brick. They're excited about all the things the brick can do. Apparently, someone bet on this enough to say we're going to start a business based on this. I mean, the pet rock made it. That was a low point in the heavens. Because, I mean, if you're going to do the idolatry thing, mortals, at least idolize something that's worth it, not a fucking rock. At least make what? it a golden calf, for God's sake. So, <laughs> sorry. The premise is someone's going to pay money for a piece of plastic. For something your kid could legit make you out of Lego. Uh, are you sure? Everybody who has life? a smartphone at this point has a dead smartphone that doesn't work anymore. They could just carry that around. Are you sure this classifies as a planet of sentient life? I'm just checking. Look, I'm just saying there's reasons I left the business, okay? Well, this, we have another story that also is about the phone thing and something that's very near and dear to my heart because it, I had a bad encounter. Apparently, your federal government has warned you, stop taking selfies with bears! Really? Last time it was tigers. A couple months After ago, it was reports, please stop taking selfies with tigers. After reports from the Taylor Creek Visitor Center staff, the guests are getting too close to bears to take pictures. The U.S. Forestry Service issued an advisory warning visitors to keep their distance from bears. I want to repeat this. A government agency literally had to tell you to stay away from the predators. One of the most common questions people ask when they first get to heaven is, I didn't, why, why, why is St. Peter drunk? Why is the gatekeeper drunk? That's not the image we have of heaven growing up. Shit like this is why Peter drinks. Luke was the drunk back in the day, but now Peter's gone completely around the bend because he has to listen to this shit. Okay, my child, how did you get here? Selfie with a bear. The heavens are in a shambles because of you people. Have, have you ever seen a bear? Well, yes, I, I helped make them. I got a bonus for bears. Big and fur and teeth and death. They're just death. I, I was almost as proud of the bear as I was of the hippo. Now that is a machine of death. Because it doesn't look like much. But it can run 35 mile out, miles an hour on land and just kill you. This damn thing... You just, you think it's all fine and everything, it's all fine and lovely, and then it stands up and it's angry. This isn't supposed to stand up, but it stands up and it's angry. I know. Can't be worse than Bill Schneip. <laughs> Don't you have those? No, that's just an Asgard oh. thing. They ask everybody. No one else has them. It's just an Oh, really? Nobody else has them. They can't quite understand it. But just, it's, it, you actually have to tell people to stay away. It's, what happened to your survival instinct? Just shut down? Yeah. It's a bear. Oh. All right, we have another one. This one, yes, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not cool with what this, this. I'm not cool with this. I don't like this. I'm, I'm, I don't. I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. No. No. Uh-uh. No. I refuse. 
This... What the... What is happening? Apparently, panic as clown terror spreads to southern France. We have a panic sparked... I'm actually saying this. A wave of panic sparked by evil clowns stalking French towns has spread to the south of France, where police on Saturday at night arrested 14 teenagers dressed as the pranksters carrying pistols, knives, and baseball bats. Police source said the teens were arrested in the parking lot of a secondary school in the town, port town of Ag... We're missing some consonants there. As several other complaints poured in over armed clowns in the re... This sounds like the best movie ever. Killer clowns from France. Fuck outer space, no offense. But killer clowns from France. This is the kind of shit that happens when you decide to worship a giant butt plug, France. Let's see, the phenomenon of dressing up as an evil clown and terrifying passersby's crops up in the north of France in early October. Uh, in the northern French town of Bethune, a man was given six months suspended term Monday for threatening passersby while in full circus garb. Using fake weapons, these clowns have been mostly spotted outside schools, but also on public roads, in bushes, in a square. Their targets are often young children or teenagers, but also adults. This is proof. This is proof that dad has a sense of humor. Because all you, all you little mortals, all this time, you're like, ooh, the zombie apocalypse. We better prepare for the zombie apocalypse. Start storing canned food and shotguns for the zombie apocalypse. You weren't ready for the fucking clown apocalypse, were you? No, someone, I, I'm going to say three words. And dad's up there that laughing because he's like, really, kids? Watch this shit. I'm about to say three words that my brain has not, they, these don't go together. And my brain doesn't want to say them, but they're written here. Anti-clown vigilantes! After a rumor of a clown stalking the eastern town of Mulhouse, five teenagers on Wednesday armed themselves with a baseball bat, a tear gas canister, a hammer, and a truncheon to meet out vigilante justice of not-so-funny pranksters. Next week on Gotham. Anti-clown vigilantes. Yeah, Batman. That's Batman. <laughs> Just in France. Except he's not wearing hockey pants. Well, it takes a while to get started. This is a thing that happened. This is a thing that actually happened on your planet. There was an influx of evil clowns, and the public rose up to drive them off. <laughs> With tear gas and hammers. Yeah. Yeah. I told you, there are reasons I left the job. And the last one for this part of the night is, uh, oh dear. All right, I, trains, as far as I understand, the big engines that sit on a track, and they go in one direction. If you want them to go in another direction, you either have to turn the rail not the train, the rail it's on, or put another engine in the back and make it go the other way. Yes. Right? Yes. Does not seem an ideal means Or, I mean, it can for... go backwards. Yes, but it does not seem an ideal... You're not getting away with it, is what I'm saying. Did someone else... Moscow me? Thief causes crash after trying to steal... Commuter train. Whence Russian this train. trend? You had one the other week, didn't you? Yeah. With trains. Oh, you're a fan of the show. Happened again. 
Yes, Fag believes that word. Russian transportation officials are on the hunt for a vandal who tried to steal a Moscow suburban commuter train on Tuesday, but ended up crashing into another train parked on the rails. Mystery train hijacker got into the front car of an electric train and rail yard in, Mos in Moscow's northern suburb of Lomnia. Again, need more consonants, I mean, need more vowels. In the small hours of Tuesday, stating, started the engine and took off. The thief did not get far before crashing the engine into another train that was parked on the tracks. I said it before and I'll say it again. They know where you're going. They will find the you. Here's the thing. It's a straight line, yes? I mean, not really, but sure. Mostly. And the tracks go in a specific direction. Yes, you cannot change you, that direction. You should be able to see what's in that direction. For example, another train parked in the way. Well, the problem with trains is you can't, like, you can't just hit the brakes and they stop. It takes miles to stop a speeding train. Like, it takes them a long time to stop. So if he didn't know what he was doing, like, the crash part I get, because if he didn't know what he was doing and he didn't see it in time, no way he was stopping in time. I don't get why people are stealing trains. They're going to find you. They know where you're going. They can control where you are going. It's not like you can, it's not like you can outrun them. No, because they know where to wait. You can't exactly, you know, Sneak a little sharp turn and boom, you're gone. Mm -mm. And I, I want to say, in the parlance of, of your times, he done fucked that train up. Yeah, yeah, he certainly did a number on it. Wow. And apparently they haven't caught him. He got away. They don't know where he is. I don't even know who did it. Well, clearly he made it to Hogwarts, even if the train didn't. I got that one! Just yes. steal a car. So, all right, we, we learned a many a thing tonight. First, we learned trains... They will, they, they, they will find you. They, you can't disappear. On a you can disappear, but the train can't. Right. Like, you can get away on a train. Or you can get out of the train and run away, but you're not getting away with the no. train. Like, Although, apparently, you home. can. Well, he, you can get away. The train won't. No. You won't be putting that in your living room. It's not going to be a coffee table piece. What's that? Oh, it's the train I stole. No, that's not going. That, that, that never happens. We've learned not only is there a clown epidemic in France, there is a resistance force. The French resistance. The French clown resistance. Are they going to do a musical about this one? I certainly hope so. Oh, my. There's a reason this is Dad's favorite planet. Well, let's get Hugh Jackman back again. It'd be wonderful. There's a reason that despite their fo foibles, the humans are Dad's favorite creatures. Because you're just so damn fun. Well, not you. We'll put Russell Crowe. We'll put Russell Crowe in, in, in a funny wig and a, and a bright red nose. Yes. That would be wonderful. We've learned... Humanity has just given up on that self-preservation thing entirely. They, they, they would rather get their a high number of retweets than they would to live. Which says a lot about your society presently. And I'll tell you, like, the other side is way ahead in the technology game. Like, I tried to tell them, you gotta, you gotta change with the times. You need an app. You need to be on Twitter. Like, you got to get on this shit. And they're like, no, no, the old ways still work. 
And you know what? Downstairs, they're on that shit. We know how many porn sites there are in the web. They're just corrupting the fuck out of everybody, like, wholesale. Don't really like boobies. The old firm couldn't keep up. And, you know, like, it's, there's a lot of reasons I left the life. Earth really likes boobies. And, I mean, you know, I go home for the holidays and they're all... Everywhere. Me, like, I'm the black sheep of the family. I'm the big disappointment because I left. And I'm like, well, you guys are getting your asses kicked. I mean, not like I'm going to go work for the other guys, but they're certainly more on top of the trend, so to speak. We've learned there's a market for selling something that looks like a phone, but isn't one. (laughs) And you know who's going to buy them? All my fucking brothers. I'm looking at you, Cass. They focus tested this. They pitched this to venture capitalists and said, we're going to sell something that looks like a phone, but isn't. It doesn't do anything. It's a piece of plastic. It's brilliant. Let's give you all our money. Idolatry just ain't what it used to be. We've learned that if you're trying to have sex with products from the Spencer's mall store, none of them work. But you can get them for free because they really don't care. I can endorse that statement for several reasons. They just don't have the world's best theft prevention policy is what I'm saying. Finally, we learned that you are not taking this Ebola shit quite in the spirit it's intended to be taken. I mean, on the one hand, there are people taking it way too seriously. And on the other, there are people dressing up as Ebola victims and going to a party. Yeah. There's, if, that's, if that's, remember, that's humanity in a nutshell for you. That dichotomy right there. Here's the thing. The Great War. Mask of the Red. The Great War isn't going to be between good and evil. We did that one already. Dad won. The Great War is going to be between different kinds of stupid. Between lackadaisical stupid and overreactionary stupid. And you know what? The Mask of the Red Death. Nobody wins. Well, the the audience does. Yeah, until they're all dead. It's hilarious. The Mask of the Red Death is a cautionary tale. Do they not understand how those work? Because if I remember rightly, at the end, everyone fucking dies. At the party! Yep. That that doesn't really put your prospects for getting laid that night in a good, in a good, you know, you're not going to get sex. You'll be dead. 